Hello ladies and gentlemen, Seiko Starcraft bringing you a game between Maru, the... I'm not going to say up and coming, he's been around for a while but kicking some serious ass lately, going up against MMA. Maru had a great run in the last WCS and these are games from the WCS Korea qualifiers. And I know that of the two players, I mean, not, uh, I don't think he's going to give any spoilers, both of these players did advance on into later rounds there with Maru doing some unbelievable play against Innovation, for owing him in fact. Just nobody saw that coming, it was ridiculous. And MMA going all the way I believe to the round of 8. So both these guys did extremely well in this last series, but I have no idea how this particular series went. So we'll see what these two different styles are coming at here. One person elected to wall off and the other person is not. And I don't think that is going to factor too much. It's not like we have too many Hellion run bys. And I've run into an interesting problem lately. It's more often against Protoss players where when you wall off, it's really great because it helps protect things. But they can usually show up with, you know, a couple of stalkers and a mothership core and just start, you know, drilling away at this front of your base. And if you run out with too many marines in the early game and get hit by, you know, a time warp, it could just end up losing. And it's it's pretty tragic, you know. It it is it's very sad. This is the only way to really describe it. Maru's gonna go for a scout. MMA's gonna look for a quick proxy first. Maru's not worried about proxies, and MMA is. Which doesn't surprise me too much. This map is very, very well known for its proxies, and this like it's kind of like half-assed looking for proxies. I mean, it wasn't really too far out of the way. Like, I'd be hiding behind the mineral lines if I was doing it. Um, he did obviously get the little space down here. This is popular. But we don't see anything of cheese really happening yet. Gath, gas for both players. MMA more worried about walling off than Maru is. They're going to scout each other at fairly similar times. We see that there is a Reaper coming out for MMA, and he is going to lock this one SCV in there just to be a jerk. One Marine is out for Maru on the low ground, so it looks like he's going to want to expand here pretty soon. Actually, he's going to get his factory out sooner. Ooh, what died? He killed. No way! How did MMA let that happen? Well, I guess it equalizes now, but that's pretty sloppy. One for one. Well, if you're going to lose your unit anyways, I mean, why not take out one at the same time? Now, because there are already two and there will be a third Marine up by the time this Reaper gets there, the fastest way into the base is over here, but it's a little bit of a guessing game as you're going to try to uh, intercept one side or the other. I think MMA is going to take the short side. No, he's not. Damn. He's going to go right up in the middle and die. No, he's going to take the other side. So Maru commits to neither side and ultimately gets no real damage done. Too many Marines to really stick around. He's going to lose it. Oh, just about. That would have been a couple of really big missteps from MMA in the start of this game. It is a reactor into the factory here. Whereas on this side will be a tech lab. Likely to see a Banshee play coming out of Maru. And maybe we're going to be seeing... Like a Hellion Marine push or something like that. Eh, could work. He knows there's no wall off at the top of the ramp. So sometimes producing yourself. Unless it is... Well, there's always just Hellbats. I mean, I keep forgetting that this is from before the nerf. And, and sometimes Hellbats are, are still the way to go. It looks like it'll be the good old-fashioned Hellions, though. This command center is up a lot faster for MMA, so Maru is going to really have to get some damage done with this Cloak Banshee to equalize things. There isn't any detection down here, there's no engineering bay. Happily, having this other command center finished, hopefully it'll have a scan or two ready. Looks like he wants to go for maybe... No, it's actually a Viking. Hmm. Kind of a mixed play here out of MMA. These Hellions really aren't paying him any dividends right now. Not too sure exactly what his goal was with those. Maybe he was going to rush for a medevac, but anticipating some sort of a banshee play, getting out that Viking is important to just not die. You know, I'm a really big fan of not dying before trying to kill. And that sometimes goes against me. What I mean by that is sometimes you have the opportunity to go in and do a bunch of damage. Looks like the Reaper got in for another scout, and we'll see what is happening there.
MMA is slightly out here. Cloak is not done yet. We are still 12 seconds away. Good micro by MMA. For... No, we won't quite get it. Boop, boop, boop. Cost him one scan, that's not too bad. A bunch of marines coming out across the map right now. With the Hellions and the Widow Mines done, I don't think these marines are going to be able to get a lot accomplished. There is a tank coming out, and more Banshees. Maybe if he had a Medivac to move some stuff, it would be a little bit more exciting. He does have that Engineering Bay, but he hasn't considered throwing down one turret even yet. Which, for me, would have been very worthwhile to get that vision around your mineral patches. Because there's no only this one Viking for anti-air. no marine oh there we go there's the raven looks like uh, Marvel was completely content to sack this one banshee we did have the missile turret go down to give a little bit of extra damage is he gonna control oh he shoots the wrong way it uh, looks like he's gonna get the repair off the tank well he won't have high ground vision unfortunately and this one mine down here will drive that back Maru does have this pressure going on, but I don't think MMA has to panic. He's got another command center on the way, his macro is doing well. I mean, he's gonna... Well, he's only down one worker, even with all that Banshee harass. That was unfortunate that he lost that Widow Mine like that. Tank is in, vision, uh, in range of the other tank there. Great repair by MMA, and he will drive back this attack fairly convincingly. Lost almost nothing in that, maybe a marine or two. Kept his air units alive as well, and will continue to push out... Oh, his own Banshee. Did he get cloaked for his Banshee? He did not, so this Banshee might just be to help him push out of his base and control the space out here. One Banshee can carve through tanks, and if there's not enough marines, really set things back. Command Center, once again, is a little bit further behind. Economy is the same though for right now. It's interesting to note the gas timings from both of these players. Neither of them have got him down in their naturals yet. I mean, you can see how much tech they managed to get off of just one base. Tanks, Raven, Widow Mines, lots of Banshees. Nice order. I'm, I'm a little bit OCD when it comes to my building lineup. The only problem I have with this is sometimes if your units are stupid, they rally into like little spots and can't get out. You know, that whole thing. Oop, drop. Oh, no, there's the Banshee still. What did we get? Four kills. Not too cray. So it looks like he'll get a handful more before he ends up leaving the other side. He doesn't have Cloak, so this Banshee's more about just trying to get maximum damage. Eh. I think it was... It's hard to say if it's completely worth it, but he does take a pretty good-sized worker lead now. He's up by eight. Man. Three kills. Where's... I was going to say, that's some pretty delayed reaction speed there. There must have been another Banshee in the main. Looks like... No combat shields. Not finished yet. Where's that Raven? That Banshee's pretty successful. Eight kills and gets away without taking a single hit point of damage. Finally, we are going to get up a couple of missile turrets. The one missile turret will shut down one Banshee. It's not too often you run against players that are going to stack three or four Banshees and make a run at you. Sometimes when you play in newbie leagues, that happens. It's so fun to do that every once in a while. You just come in with this big fleet of Banshees and roll over stuff. It's the cancel off on that building, happily. It's a pretty expensive one to have lost. It is interesting to see that neither player is really taking a big air superiority lead. These are the only real air units that MMA has out, and those Banshees aren't going to give you too much control. But having that air advantage to take out Medivacs, to give you the vision with your tanks, is pretty important, I figure. It's just not as important yet at this stage of the game, where both these players are really just trying to get that full economy in, in a good scale. Getting all the production buildings finished up, getting the third bases down. Hey, kitty cat. Yeah, you're going to have to give me a bit of space. No, don't poke at me. P 
pretty stabilized right now. I do like that MMA has spread out some units here just to be able to keep better tabs on what's going on with his opponent to see what attacks are coming back at him. If he's lucky, he'll be able to really just sink into this really good position here and Maru could get flanked pretty heavy. Yeah, suck it. One hit point. Not too sure what MMA is doing here. It's a little indecisive. <laughs> and Maru obviously has no idea that this is happening. Loses the sensor tower and a tank for free. A little bit unfortunate there. He is going to get himself in a better defensive position. MMA is watching his flanks. Making sure he doesn't get somebody running around him. Come on, Mouse. I believe in you. Oh, cool. Pretty good damage there with that. That's kind of why I love that air superiority. These just can just change the game sometimes with really, really well-placed aggression. And there's not much that Mario can really do about this. You can run ahead forward a few Marines here, maybe snipe these. Uh, now would be a great time because he's moved his tanks. MMA's got to be a little bit wiser not to leave his units hanging there. There's the air battle I was expecting. This is a pretty expensive bust that Maru's going to go for here. He's trying to bust out of this containment. Oh, MMA. Yeah. Where's the secret missile going to hit? Fudge. Not swaying. Fudge. Well, that was a pretty impressive secret missile. All of a sudden, this marine count that's so important for MMA here has been whittled down significantly. Still not getting a bunch of Vikings coming out on this side. Looks like MMA is really not that interested in trying to win the battle of the air. But you can see that it's pretty effective to be able to just have that range. Pick off those medevacs. Keep better position. Keep vision of the tanks. Well, killing the cooling tower would... Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily to Maru's advantage right now. Because I don't think MMA is necessarily interested in going in for a really big push. I guess maybe he is. Pretty tense little spot here. It's a good sized army from Maru. Behind this, I'm kind of surprised there hasn't been a, a fourth base or anything for MMA. Ugh, takes a couple of big tank shots to his marines. Looks like he is just going to fall back now, not seeing too much more to gain from this position. He's going to try to go around through a different angle. He's going to stim up, he's going to try to grab a few tanks. He looks like he gets one. Doesn't lose too many marines either, that wasn't too bad. A couple more shots and that would have been definitely not worth it. This is again shaping up pretty interesting here. Maru has clawed back the supply count. You see there's a lot of missile turrets going down now just to make sure that no counter drops really happening. Looks like there is one drop going to head up into this which is really what Maru needs to do to get the pressure off of himself. Uh, I don't know about this MMA. That's really funny. He did forget about his drop for a moment there. Funny enough. Great position here by Maru. Looks like he's just going to be in range. He should get himself a couple of pre-tanks. Once again, that air control does mean something.
still great vision here by MMA, just making sure nothing else is happening on the map. Do we have another command center on the way? It doesn't look that way. Oh, uh, great move forward once again. Zimaru's finally interested in busting this, and I don't think that MMA can afford to stick around. His tanks are not shooting at the best clumps of units right now. I think he might... Maybe if he actually rallied in his units, if you have enough, he doesn't want to lose the medevacs. Use your boost. There you go. Use the boost to get through, as Slippy would say. Well, the pressure suddenly turned around quite a bit here, but... And look at the supply difference all of a sudden. There's the macro of Maru, what he's doing... Macro from Maru. God, that sounds stupid. Gonna put himself in a pretty good position from the looks of this and really turn that pressure around, just playing so patiently. And now it's gonna be the exact same story on a different side. Once again, just no Vikings in play. And that air control, getting out a couple of Vikings, maybe even a Banshee, can just really help alleviate that pressure. Oh, it doesn't quite get the Viking too. It's got five hit points. This is a very good position for Maru to play around. These obstacles that MMA has to move around inside of are going to make it a little bit more difficult for him to really control. It's not going to be as easy for MMA to push through and try to counteract this. Oh, he's letting a couple of his tanks die pretty easily there. I'm really enjoying how Maru is playing this out. There is this giant drop. I was about to ask where all of MMA's forces are. He needs to get in here and do damage soon. This next wave of reinforcements he would not be able to stop. Picks off another two tanks. He really needed to hang on to those. So many medevacs here. Looks like Maru will be able to keep control of this army. He yeah, actually's going to go snipe the command center. That's a really interesting choice. He will get it. But I think that Maru's going to just clean up this other command center, this whole base. This is very micro base trading. I don't think it's really going to be that effective. The supplies are fairly even. Let's see if MMA can save most of his workers here. He does need to start controlling this high ground. Oh, there's this one tank. It will get shut down. He's going to lose a lot of his economy here, Maru. It's not necessarily as big of a deal, because I'm sure he thinks he can win with the army that he has. This tank needs a siege up immediately. I think MMA is a little bit... There he goes. He's going to say a little bit flustered, trying to really keep on top of all this. That tank will get sniped before it can get too much damage in. This attack's still going on here. Crazy. He's got to rally everything to the back here. Now this contain area is a little bit better for MMA. It'll help slow down any advances. Oh, there's one tank sieging up here. I think MMA is going to lose. Yeah. If that little bit of army wasn't there, might have been a different story. Pretty crazy game there. I actually thought MMA had the lead for a long time with that containment. Great turnaround, great patience by Maru, and then after that just keeping the pressure on. And interesting choice for MMA to go for that really massive marine drop. That drop, if it was at home to defend, might have helped him stabilize. But he took a risk, didn't quite pay off this time. This is a best of three series, so I'll be back with the game two for you guys right away.